All right, how are we doing? What are we doing today? Polar equations. Polar. More polar. And some more polar. All right. Let's get started. So, uh, today is a lot of stuff that uh, you've already been doing done be doing before, but uh, today we take a second look at it from the point of view of polar equations. So, take a look at other kind of equations. These are called Cartesian. They were invented by Rene Descartes, and these coordinate system this coordinate system tells you more or less uh, where you are by naming each point in a certain way so this the name of this point is of course 3 4 and the obvious reason is because from the origin you go three units that way and then you go four units that way and this is how you figure out where you're at on the coordinate system uh, you have a reference point called the origin and from there you go left or right and then up and down and in doing so you can name every single point on the plane by a specific name, okay? This one, for example, would, the name of this one would be negative three. You've gone left three and then down two. We call these ordered pairs, negative three, negative two. All right, that's the whole way of doing things. Now, what we propose is to uh, provide an alternative to this point of view, to the uh, Descartes uh, system of four coordinates. And that would be the uh, polar coordinates. That has a different point of view, it says, Wait a minute, you don't have to tell me left or right or up and down. First, figure out which way you're looking. Figure out, point your nose at whichever way you're headed. Here, I've got an assistant here. This is Mr. Banana. It's got a long nose that'll help us point in directions. It says, hey, first figure out where you're going. Oh, it's one o'clock. No, 105. You're going towards uh, one o'clock. Uh, and then figure out how far are you going. You're going one two, three, four, five units in the 105 degree direction. So this point, while before it would have been called three, four, today we can call it uh, five units in the 105 o'clock direction. That's the idea for polar coordinates. Uh, not to go left and right and up and down, but to figure out which way are you going. You could go anywhere. Just point at it. Point to me. Which way am I going? Once you're pointing at it, um, uh, then you just tell me how which how many units do I need to go in that direction, and in that way you can find any single point on the plane uh, just as well as you could have uh, with the previous uh, idea with the Descartes notation. There are some differences, major differences here. Every single point has a unique name, and every single name has a unique point. Uh, this point right here would be called nobody can call it anything else other than to the right one and up three. Uh, that's but the only name for it, of course, you could say 1.0, but that's silly, that's equivalent. There's only one name for this point, it's 1, 3. On the other hand, that marks a very important distinction between that and the um, polar coordinates. This one could have other names. And the reason is because uh, we could walk backwards or we don't have to stop at 12 o'clock. Um, let me elaborate on that. Traditionally, what people have done is, although they do this with the 5 o'clock and the 2 o'clock and all that, it's not the way, only way to determine which way you're facing. The alternative would be to use uh, degrees or radians and say, hey, tell me which degrees am I looking at from standard position angles? Look, I'm looking at 52 degrees. Oh, okay, 52 degrees. Once you've got looking at 52 degrees, 52 degrees, I'm looking that way, 52 degrees. And then you just integrate how far are you going? You're going 1 two, three, four, five units. That's uh, that point right there, which is the same as th uh, three, four, roughly. Um, but I was uh, elaborating on the distinction. The important distinction here is that uh, in Cartesians, every single point has a unique name. Every single name has a unique point. Here, all bets are off, man. Look, here's another way to do it. I could say, you know what, I'm going to look at not 52, but 52 plus 360 plus 360, right? So that would give me 2, 1, 4, that would give me 411 degrees. So now if I look at 411 degrees, okay, I'm looking at it. Now uh, I'm looking that way, now I'll go 5 units, I would end up in the same point. And so here you go, you have um, two different ways of naming that same point. But wait, there's more. 
you could also go backwards. Instead of going with positive angles, you could go with negative angles. Uh, negative 270 plus uh, whatever this is, and that could get you another angle. And you could go many times. You could even face this way. You could be facing this way, which is 180 away from from 52, and then walk backwards. So you could have negative R's. That makes the polar coordinates a lot, a lot more interesting. Uh, first distinction here, uh, Cartesian points uh, are unique to their position, and r theta, which is the polar way, determine the r, the radius, how far you're going, and the theta, which way you're looking. These are not unique. In fact, every single one of these points would have infinite many names for it. Uh, there is one point that only has one name. Can you guess what it is? Well, actually, no, that, I take that back. All the points have infinite many names. Anyways, uh, if you're a beginner with polar coordinates, this should get you uh, introduced and maybe even a few more things that you should take into consideration. Uh, let's practice uh, plotting some points, yeah? So take this point right here. Uh, this point right here. How would you name that point? Using polar coordinates. Your first, the first thing you do is figure out which way you're looking. Oh, I'm looking that way. 120 degrees direction. That's where I'm looking. Okay, once you figure out which way you're looking, and figure out how far you are going in that direction. You're going one, that's one unit, two units, three units. Three units in 120 degree direction. That's how you find the points. Again, these points are not unique. Um, what would be another way to look at it? You could look at it the opposite way and walk, walk backwards. So instead of looking towards 120, you'd be looking towards uh, 300. So you could say, look towards 300 and then travel backwards that would be negative 3 and that would put you back at uh, the same point both of these ones both of these names represent the same point you see the point being represented various ways and again this would also work if you walk backwards that would be um, uh, 180 plus 30 plus 30 plus 30 plus 30 um, that would give you negative 240 uh, negative 240 Negative 240 degrees, uh, and then of course you also, in that case, you walk back, uh, you walk forward, once you're facing the negative 240 degrees direction. There you go. Three different names for the same point. This happens all along on um, polar coordinates. Uh, this point, for example, you might say, well, you're going in the zero degrees direction for units, but uh, you could also say, you know what? Actually, I was looking backwards at 180 degrees, and I travel backwards, or again forward. 360 degrees. All these represent the same point. Okay, that's polar coordinates. Now the other thing, the other thing you should uh, understand is that there's this easy conversion between one and the two, a sort of a dictionary that would help you get from one to the other if you ever need it. Um, and to that, we're going to look at the point uh, in both ways. So one way, you just have the uh, right to the right three up four. That's the Cartesian. The other way. You're looking at some angle, and you're going out so many units. To figure out the exact conversion, we look at look at this triangle and label uh, all the important variables here. X is however much you go to the right. Y, however much you go up. A theta is the direction in which you're looking, and R is how far you're going. So here would be the uh, dictionary. You could you don't have to memorize it from anybody. You can just derive it using common sense. Let's use some common sense here. You could say, you know, from here, the cosine ratio is defined to be the adjacent over the hypotenuse. That's the definition, right? Adjacent from from this point of view here. This is my adjacent. This is my hypotenuse. So this ratio, cosine, would give you x over r. That would tell you that r times cosine theta is equal to x. And so that would tell you that anything, any time you wanted to find x. If you knew r and theta, you could just plug them in here. x is equal to r times cosine theta. Similarly, you look at this ratio. From here, this is the opposite side, and this is the hypotenuse. We know a famous function that describes such a ratio. That famous function, of course, is sine. This tells you that y is equal to r times sine theta. And this gives you um, some sort of a dictionary that says, hey, anytime you want to convert from one to the other. If you know theta and r, you can easily get x and y. No problem. 
And there's no, every dictionary has two sides. What if you had x and y but you want to find r theta? To do that, you could use the following. You could say, you know what, tangent theta is equal to y x. And you could solve this equation and you'd get theta. Unfortunately, this equation has often many, many, many solutions. If this is any real number, this one will have many, many, many solutions because, uh, as we just said, every every point on the polar coordinate has many names. So you could be spinning all the way long. It could be, you know, whatever angle, 20 degrees, and then add 360, and add 360, and add 360. Or add 180 and go backwards, add 180 and go backwards, or add 180 plus 360 and go backwards. There are too many solutions here. That's why you can't narrow it down. There's not one theta that works, but this will help you find the theta. The other thing you should note here is that you could, this is a right triangle, so it'll base Pythagorean theorem. Namely, uh, you could say that r square is equal to x square plus y square. So r is equal to plus or minus the square root of that. And you might wonder, well, which one is it, the plus or the minus? And the answer is, it could be either one. There's not one unique r that works. Um, there's not one unique angle that works. There are many, many combinations that work. So you have to figure it out on the, in, the, in any case, and you won't have one unique solution. A uh, million ways to name every point in polar coordinates. All right, shall we try that with an example? All right, um, so we could try this with an example. This with an actual example. Um, so suppose I've got this point, as I did before, 3, 4, and I wanted to find uh, my r theta. Um, let's find theta first of all. So we go with uh, standard here. The, th the thing that we know about theta is that tangent of theta is equal to y over x. That would mean that tangent of theta is equal to 4 over 3. And this would be is what we would call a basic equation. Uh, from tree, we have to solve for, for the angle theta, and there's probably a whole bunch of solutions to this. Let's make a picture of them. So we have the tangent graph. Tangent graph goes like this, it goes like this, it goes like this. This point is about 1.333, so let's make it a different color just for fun. Let's go with white. This is 4 over 3. And so this is the these are the parts where tangent is equal to 4 over 3. There are many, many, many points, many such points. Um, so, how do we find them? Well, you could put it on a calculator. You could say arc tangent, uh, you could say uh, theta is equal to arc tangent of 4 over 3. But that's not really the complete story. The calculators will give you one value. They're usually good enough for one value, the one that falls in the standard domain and range for the arc function. In this case, between 90 and negative 90. That's the one the calculator will give you. It'll probably punch that in. It'll probably give you something like 53 degrees or something like that. Okay? To figure out the other ones, you would use the symmetry on the graph here. This has a period of 180, so if you go 180, that would get you to the next one. 180 plus 53 degrees approximately. Okay, which would give you 2, 3, 3 degrees more or less. The other one would give you, uh, you have to subtract 180, so this one would be uh, 53 take away 180 and and so on and so forth and this will give you a whole bunch of angles all of them will work and so there you go your theta is equal to uh, 53 degrees 233 degrees etc 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 now to figure out r we use that <coughs> um, we use that r square is equal to 3 square plus 4 square so therefore r square is equal to 9 plus 16 so r squared is equal to 25, so r is equal to plus or minus 5. Well, which r is it? Well, the truth is they both work depending on which combination of angles you pick. So suppose you go with a positive one. So a positive one would give you uh, 5. So if r is equal to 5, here we put them together. Uh, if r is equal to 5, um, you should face that way. 53 degrees would be good. Uh, theta is equal to 53 degrees. I have to look at the point actually to figure it out. Uh, 53 points me in the right quadrant, first quadrant, and I go out 5 units, and that works. What about if I choose theta is equal to 223? Think about it. 223 puts me over here. Now I'm looking at the 223 degree direction, that way. How am I going to get to that point if I'm looking that way at the 223 directions? Well, I choose the other r. r is equal to negative 5. So this would also work, and that would also work, and there are millions of other ones that would work. 
because of the nature of the problem, in polar coordinates there are infinite many names for every point. So that's, uh, that's a rough idea on how you convert, uh, use these uh, dictionaries. Um, I think that's a good little intro. We should, we should come back and do some more things. Uh, there's still a lot of things we got to do. For example, uh, that just showed you the difference between polar and uh, Cartesian equations and how they work. The other things we should do is to start graphing some equations, of course, find some tangent slopes areas and do some calculus. Come back and we'll do uh, some more of these. Uh, I think next we should do graphing, yeah? Graphing polar equations. All right, we'll do that next.